Hello, welcome to Steve McDonald's Arts and Crafts and today what I'm going to do, as I promised quite a while ago, is show you how I make my own bezels. So something similar to this and I will show you how I made the bare bezel. What I do is I get some flat wire and it's quite a nice easily bendable wire and I will link this in the description below so you can easily get hold of it because it's so easy to use and not only that but it cuts really really easily. I mean to be honest I think you could cut it with scissors if you don't have any wire cutters. There we go. So yeah, so you could cut it with scissors. Now what I do is I make a decision on what shapes that I want to use. So for instance I want quite a large round one and I've got this large round bottle here. I'll use that as my template. So I'll bend my wire around this bottle holding it with my thumb like I said, it does bend really, really easily until it joins up like that. And then I will get my cutters and where that is there, can you see how that is lining up nicely there against there? I will just nip through it and then you've got your cut out. Now, you can solder these, but I don't solder them and I'll show you why in a minute because I don't think you need to solder them and that just adds another step that's complex. So there's one that size. Try and be dent gentle with them until you've filled them with resin because if not you can easily bend them out of shape again. So I want another bare one. So I always start with it there in its neck and I will hold that down. Now if you can't hold it down then just tape it down and then I will just go round this and gently bring it into shape. When I get to a bit there, I push it and then just use my fingers again and just move it round like that. So really easy. You can see how easy this is. This is bending. And I've shown people how to do this who also suffer from arthritis. So I know it bends really, really easily. And what I do is I build up quite a few of these shapes for I want to resin them because I just find that that is easy for me to do. Again, there's our bit joining together. I'll just bring my pliers to that, cut through it. There we've got our little bear shape. And then I want to make sure it's flat. So I put it down onto a surface to ensure that it's flattened out. And I'll show you how I seal these before I fill them with resin. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and ring that little bell so you don't miss out on any of my other future videos. I do lots of different things like this. I do projects, I do experiments with resin, and I do a lot of tutorials as well. And I release videos regularly every week. Hit that like button as well. It really helps my videos get out there. I'm trying to grow my channel at the moment, so I would appreciate it. And please leave me a comment. I love reading the comments. This is how I seal them and it works really really well. I get my homemade bezels and I push them together and I line up the cut as close as I can possibly get it as you can see. Then I have some really quite runny super glue so the thin stuff. I put a little dob on it there and then honestly you won't believe this I pop a bit of bicarbonate of soda on it and then I dry it. And then what you'll find is that will sit in there really, really nicely. And when it's finished drying, I just cut off any little excess. I don't always get excess on it, as you can see with this one. But obviously, I wasn't very careful with that. And I don't know why or how it does it. I'm sure someone in there will be able to tell me in the comments why the bicarbonate soda gives it such a hard finish. But it does, and it works really well, and it saves you having to solder anything. Okay I've got them all sealed now and what I use is I use this piece of wood as you've probably seen me use before in my other videos and I use double-sided sticky tape as I find I like that a little bit better <laughs> than the normal tape that you can buy. Also I find it's a little bit cheaper but I think you get a great result from it. So all I'll do is I put it on this bit of wood because that means I got it something nice and firm to put it on. I make sure it's nicely sealed down and then I just take up the edge and I can see where it is and then I put my next bit down after that. And the reason I do one bit at a time is because if not I end up sticking it over this top bit and then I can't get it off. 
All I need to do is place them onto the tape and make sure they're stuck down. And this is why it's important to ensure that when you're doing these, that they're as level as you can get them and as flat as you can get them. Try not to bend them out of shape because you want it all to have stuck down. I mean, we may get some leaks, but if we do, I'll show you how to deal with those as well. This one here, you can see, is quite on the woggle. Now, I can bend this one down, but I will hold on to my seal bit because it will likely snap and I don't want it to snap because we only need it to hold that seal until the resin has gone in and then the resin will hold it anyway. And then what I do is before I'm gonna pour these, I heat them up because then I find that it heats up the glue on this sticky tape makes it a little bit more tacky and then I will push down on them while it's a little bit more tacky and I find I get a lot less leaks coming out. And then I'll check it over and then I will get my resin ready. I'll show you what I do for that, how I pour into these and then I'll let them cure up and I'll show you what they look like finished. These are ready to be poured into now and what I'm going to be using is I'm going to be using several different colours and what I will always recommend when you're using your homemade bezels is that you allow your resin to thicken up quite a bit because with the wire you will find that there's some unique little bends in it because they're not machine made and if you allow your resin to thicken up quite a lot then you won't get as much leak you might get a little bit but you won't get much so I've given this another check over and there are a few gaps but only small ones so I'm using my hot glue gun to fill those in just putting a little stream of glue around where those gaps are and then what I'll do is I'll go in with a toothpick and just push that into it to make sure there are no leaks I've also mixed up my resin as you can see I'm pouring my resin in here now and I've used mica powders and glitters uh, separately to give different effects. When you're putting in anything into your homemade bezels, ensure that the insides are clean and also make sure that you push the resin, if you've let it thicken up, right to the edges to make sure that you get a good seal and make sure that it stays where you want it to stay. And I like using glitter and pigment and mica powder because you do get some really good effects, like you here with the hearts, you know, what's better than a nice red heart that you've made yourself. I never overfill them because there is no need to. I just want to say a quick thank you to all my members whose names are coming up now. Thank you very much for being a member. If you'd like to be a member, all the links are in the description below. So again, I'm using quite a different variety of colours within these homemade bezels to ensure that I'm getting a good effect that I'm that I'm looking for. If you'd like to say thank you for all the videos that I do and help contribute towards the cost of materials, then there is a link in the description where you can buy me a coffee just to say thank you. It's really appreciated. I'm currently saving up for a 3D printer that I want to use in resin and other projects. So I'm just finishing off these bezels now with a little bit of yellow mica powder and some white and just giving it a mix through. And I do like to give these mix through because you get a great result. Then I'll leave these to cure up for about 24 hours and we'll come back. Well, these have all cured now, these homemade bezels. And some of them did leak out, but that is often the case when you make your own bezels. But it doesn't matter. I will show you how easy it is just to take them out and clean them up as quickly as this one cleaned up. So all you need to do is get them off the sticky now the sticky is quite set down which is a good thing so sometimes you need to put a little knife like this underneath them now if you do these on rather than doing them on a piece of wood I like to do them on a piece of wood because I can move it around but if you do them on a silicon mat then you can just peel the silicon mat off so there we go so that's come off I take that off and then what you'll find is the overspill resin will just pick straight off this wire and it's great. Now, if you get left with any sticky on the back of your bezel, which can sometimes happen, all I do is take a bit of paper, just a squidge of alcohol and run it over these off the back and then that will get rid of any of that sticky that is left on there. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull the rest of these off. I love the way that the one with the glitter in has come out. It's It's got that translucent look to it, both back and the front. And this is the advantage of making your own 
bezels you can do them in any shape so i think the bear is really cute so now we've got these made what's important is to be able to hang them up or to put them on to earring backings or cords or necklaces or something and there's a couple of ways that i do it the first way is so you've got one of these little screw eyes in and the second way is where you put a jump ring in. I will be using my Dremel. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a jump ring in that one and a screw in this bear because I think it will look better without having a jump ring going through the top of its head. So I just use a drill bit in my Dremel and I will list this in the description below. You could use one of those hand drills. It's just gonna be a little bit more hard work. I turn my Dremel on and I have it on quite a slow speed. It's only a one on the Dremel thing. And I just make sure I get it in the middle of the wire going, so in the middle here, because I don't wanna come through my resin. And I slowly drill until it catches and then I just go into it. So that's nicely slowly drilled. It hasn't come out either side. Then I just take one of the little screw things and I just slowly screw that in. And that way you've got one of those in there and you can use it for your homemade bezel. And if you need to, you can either use a push bail on it or a jump ring. And I quite like using the jump rings. That's now gone there. You could put a cord through that and hang it up or wear it as a big necklace. Now this one I'm going to do with just the jump ring. And, that, and because I use just the jump ring on this, all I do is I choose which one I'm... Now I've got this one that's hanging as a diamond. So I'm going to have this one hanging as a square. I go as close to the edge of the wire as I can. I just drill through. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and ring that notification bell so you don't miss out on any of my future videos. And also please hit that like button. I'm trying to grow my channel at the moment and I've got some exciting things coming up and hitting the like button really does help. So all I'm going to do is just pop this through there like so. Wiggle it in. There we go, like that. And then close that jump ring up. And there, that's not gonna go anywhere. And now you've got it hanging like that. So they are really easy to add clasps to or anything else. I will link the video at the end of this video on how to make up all sorts of jewelry and different techniques that I use. So check that one out and I look forward to seeing you in that one. And don't forget, if you'd like to buy me a coffee, just to say thank you for all the videos that I make. It really does help me keep this channel going and be able to spend the time and money that I spend on this channel. And I can't tell you how much I appreciate it. I'm currently saving for a 3D printer so that I can start printing things and adding that to my resin work as well. I will link everything that I've used in the description below. So just go down to the description. If you can't find the description, it's underneath this video and just click show more or the little down arrow and it will take you to the description. All links will be in there. Take care, enjoy your resin, bye.